So far, all the examples of trigonometric equations we've learned to solve were unit circle values. When in reality, most values are not going to be unit circle values. So now we need to deal with what happens when it's not a unit circle value. As an example, we're going to start by solving sine of x equals 1 third. Just like with unit circle values, the first step is always to get the single trig function equal to some number of numbers. So I've already done that. But now, if I try to say, write down all the places on the unit circle that have a sine value of 1 third, there aren't any. Okay. So we're going to use our calculator. Okay. You'll notice that over the sine button is a sine inverse button. So you'll go second sine inverse, enter 1 third, and compute that. The only thing you have to be careful of is to make sure your calculator is in either radians or degrees, depending on how you want your answer. Here I'm going to do it in degrees. When I entered it into my calculator, I got the answer 19.47 degrees. Here's the problem. That's only one answer. We know that not only are there two answers within the unit circle range between 0 and 360, there's actually infinitely many answers to any trigonometric equation. So, how do we get all of them? Okay. I'm going to teach you a trick. First of all, in your calculator, you will always put sine inverse, or whatever the trig function is, of a positive number. So this one happened to be one third, and we were okay with that. Okay. If it had been minus one third, I still would have plugged in positive one third to get the 19.47. Okay. Now, I'm going to modify this. I'm going to call this theta, because it's not exactly the answer yet. If you always do inverse trig of the positive version, this theta we're going to call it will always be a first quadrant answer because the inverse trigs of a positive always land in first quadrant. Now, here's the magic way to turn it into any other answer. Okay. Here, if you really want a second quadrant angle, it's going to be 180 degrees minus what you got here. If you really want a third quadrant angle, it'll be 180 degrees plus what you got here. And if you really wanted a fourth quadrant angle, it'll be 360 degrees minus what you got there. Okay. So here's how we do these problems. I want to know when sine of x equals one third. I do sine inverse of positive one third in my calculator, I get 19.47 degrees. Then I say, which two quadrants is sine positive in? Answers one and two. So my actual answers for x are that 19.47, because that's just already the quadrant one answer, plus 360k, and 180 minus 19.47, which is 160.53 degrees, again, plus 360k. Similarly, if I was solving sine of x equals minus a third, I would still plug sine inverse of positive one third in and get that theta is 19.47 degrees. The difference would come in that I know that sine is negative in quadrants three and four. So my values for x would be 180 plus 19.47 degrees, which is 199.47 degrees plus 360k and 360 minus 0.47 degrees, which is 340.53 degrees plus the 360k. So when you're doing a non-unit circle answer, always get the first quadrant one and then force it to be in the quadrant you want it to be in. Okay. Now, let's do one more example from the beginning. When we look at this, we need a single trig function. Okay. But I don't have any trigonometric identities that turns cosine squares of x's into cosine x's or vice versa. But what I do notice is that this kind of looks like this quadratic equation, where u is cosine x. So I try to solve the quadratic. First step is to say, does it factor? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Then you would use the quadratic formula okay, and arrive at this answer. Now, this means that cosine of x is negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, or negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. 
two possible answers and I've reached my first goal. Clearly they're not unit circle values. Now, we have to do a little checking. Square root of five is a number between two and three, okay? Negative one plus two something is one something, divided by two is, you know, about 0.75-ish, okay? So this is an okay answer. It's within the range of cosine, which is negative one to one, and it's a positive answer because it's very critical. We know if it's a positive or negative number. Here, negative one minus two something is negative three something, divided by two is a number like negative 1.5, which is not in the range of cosine. So that's not actually a possible answer. So I'm gonna follow this. I'm gonna plug into my calculator cosine inverse of the positive version, which is just that number. This is my theta and I get 0 0.906, and this time I did it in radians. Okay, now, cosine is positive here. I say which two quadrants is cosine positive in? Answer is first and fourth. So my answer for x will be the first quadrant answer, plus two pi k, and the fourth quadrant answer, which is two pi minus theta, since I'm doing radians, All right, so whenever you are solving an equation and you have a non-unit circle value, you're going to have to refer to this chart. You may notice it looks a little bit like the reference angle computations, but there is a slight difference. 